Howdy, howdy. This is Mr. Potter. Today we're going to be talking about Elon Musk, or rather we're going to be talking about an interview question, an interview riddle, that he's often rumored to have brought up when he's trying to hire new employees to see whether or not they can, quote, think outside the box or not. And this is the traveling problem. Basically, a person travels one mile south, one mile west, and then one mile north, and ends up back at the place where they started. Now, at first glance, this seems kind of counterintuitive, because if we travel one mile south from a spot, and then we travel one mile west, and then we travel one mile north, it doesn't seem like we should end up back at the place where we started. But this question is often called the what color is the bear problem, because I've often heard this asked where a person travels one mile south, one mile west, and one mile north, and then shoots a bear in front of their starting spot, and the question is, what color is the bear? And the idea, of course, is that this could be a black bear, or it could be a brown bear. But in fact, you actually are ending up with a white bear, because you're starting in a very, very cold place. So let's talk about what's happening here. There is an easy solution to this. The idea, of course, is that you're starting at the North Pole. You travel south to a particular point, and then you travel one mile west along this line of latitude, and then you travel one mile north, and you end up back at this starting point. The idea, of course, is that with this line of latitude here, this is a right angle, and this, in fact, is also a right angle, but because the circle that goes around the Earth is so close to the North Pole that you're actually just traveling north and south to the exact same starting point. This is the easy solution, but there is also a slightly more interesting solution, a more tricky solution. The idea is that you're actually starting down here near the South Pole. Not at the South Pole, but near the South Pole. Let's choose a little brighter color. So I'm starting here and I'm going to go south one mile, not to the South Pole, but to a place where the distance around the Earth, this line of latitude, is exactly one mile. And then traveling back north takes me back to my starting point. So I could have a situation where I'm starting at a point really close to the South Pole, not at the South Pole. And the question is, where? So let's talk about this from a mathy standpoint. And I'm going to assume one little bit of information that the radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles. And if you assume that the Earth is a sphere, this is a really good mean uh, radius for the Earth. So if I'm dealing with an Earth that has a radius of 3,960 miles, that means the distance from the center of the Earth to our special part, this latitude right here, is 3,960 miles. But this radius of this circle has to be such that the distance around the Earth at this latitude has to be one mile, so this, is, this radius is going to have to be 1 over 2 pi miles from the axis of rotation to the point on the Earth. And our objective is to find theta, because this theta is actually going to be, from the equator, the number of degrees south, because of the alternate interior angles rule. So I'm trying to find this angle theta, and so we are dealing with a adjacent over hypotenuse situation, that's cosine. So the cosine of theta is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi divided by 3,960. Keep in mind these are both miles, so my units will divide out. And when I actually do this calculation, I find out that theta equals 89.99769 degrees. And because this is the line of latitude, this is 89.99769 degrees south which kind of gives us a really good picture of just how huge the Earth is. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is where I want to end up. So I actually want to be at a point on the Earth, travel a mile down to get to this point, then travel around the Earth, and then travel a mile up. So I need to know how long a mile is in terms of degrees. And again, I need to take a look at the Earth as a whole. The Earth is a total of 360 degrees. 
and the radius is 3,960 miles. So that means that one degree, one degree is going to be how many miles? Well, the circumference of the Earth is going to be 2 times pi times 3,960 miles. But I want to divide that by 360 degrees for the totality of the Earth, and I end up with 69.115 miles. And that means that if I was to look at the difference in one degree of latitude, one degree is going to be a distance, an arc length, of 69.115 miles. That's going to be this distance here. Of course, I want to know what distance is going to be one mile. So I'm going to have to take this 69.115 and take the reciprocal of it to figure out how much one mile is. And one mile ends up being 0 0.0144 seven degrees. So ultimately what's going to happen is that this is my ending point. I'm going to go down, then around, then up. So I want to take this and I want to subtract 0 0.01447 degrees, and that's going to get me at 89.98322 degrees south. And that means if I'm anywhere on the earth, at 89.98322 degrees south, go one mile south, one mile west, which takes me all the way around the Earth along this axis of revolution, and then go one mile back up, I will end up at my starting point. And technically, any point on this line of latitude will do that for me. So that's great. We have an answer, and it's actually an infinite number of answers. Well, let's talk about this, because keep in mind, our drawing is not to scale. So here is a map of Antarctica. And you notice these circles that I've got here. This outermost circle is the Arctic Circle, which is actually 66 degrees and about 34 minutes south. This solid circle is actually 70 degrees south. This circle right here is 80 degrees south. And the South Pole is generally accepted to be 90 degrees south here. So what we're doing is we're actually going to 89.98322 degrees south, which is ever so slightly away here. We're going to go down a mile. We're going to go around the South Pole until we hit this point, and then back up a mile. So keep in mind that even though the answer is what color is the bear, there are no bears at the South Pole. There aren't any living creatures here except the occasional penguin that gets lost. Um, and we are, for all practical purposes, at the South Pole. We're probably navigating around some base buildings at Amundsen Scott Base. But we are, for all practical purposes, at the South Pole. And something else that we need to consider is, well, you know, I'm just considering the situation where I go south a mile and then I go around the Earth once and then go up a mile. What if I have the situation where I start a little bit closer to the South Pole, go south, and I go to a place where the circumference of the Earth is only half a mile, so I'm actually going around twice before I go back up. In other words, what if my situation is not where the hypotenuse is 3,960 miles and the radius is 1 over 2 pi, but what if it's 1 over 4 pi? As a matter of fact, what if I go one mile south and then I do 10 pirouettes before I go back north? I'm always going to end up back at that starting point, but there's actually a lot of different solutions. There's a lot of different things that I could do. I could go around 365 times just to be funny. As a matter of fact, I could go somewhere where I go down and actually hit the North Pole or South Pole. I go around an infinite number of times so that I travel one mile, and then I go back up to my starting point. So there are actually a lot of concentric rings on this Earth that are really, really close to the South Pole that are going to be solutions to this answer, as well as the trivial solution, which is the North Pole. So then the question then becomes, why do businesses want people who really, they want to ask these ridiculous questions, these questions that 
really have nothing to do with the job that they're trying to hire you for. And so one of the things that they are doing here is they're trying to see, one, who can think outside the box. So the idea is that I've got this problem and there is an obvious solution and they don't want to hear the obvious solution. They want to hear a different type of solution because they really want to know how do you think about a problem? How do you approach a problem? In other words, they're really asking you to show how you think. In other words, they want to see your problem solving strategy. They want to see how you can actually approach a problem, how you can break it down into sub problems that are easier to solve and how you can put the pieces together to come up with a solution or multiple solutions that will help make the business better. They're also wanting to know how much raw random knowledge do you have? I mean, aside from my knowing this 3,960 miles as an approximate radius of the Earth, I really couldn't approach this problem if I didn't have some number here, but it would have been really easy for me to just throw some number here. And they certainly would have respected my answer even if I told them that the radius of the Earth was 6,000 miles, or if the radius of the Earth was 600 miles. As long as my procedure is intact. The actual data is not really that important. But if you have that raw random knowledge, that means that if you have a problem come up in the workspace, maybe you have the answer just sitting in the back of their head. And maybe they can leverage that answer or maybe leverage that thought process, that thinking process, or that little bit of data that you have into a viable solution that makes the business better. And then finally, the final reason they ask this question is, how do you handle surprise? I mean, if they ask the question, you know, would you rather eat spaghetti or crab for the rest of your life, and why, that's not really a question that has anything to do with business or problem solving or any of those things. But they want to see how flustered do you get when you're asked a question that really has no correct answer, really has no good answer, really has no reasonable answer. But they want to know what your answer is, and they want to know why you come up with it. That's why companies like Google and Apple have these mythic interview questions, these interview questions which seem completely outside the scope of what you would normally approach in a work environment, because they want to know how you think, and they want to see if the way you think will help their business. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.